Yo, how's everybody doing? It's the Hawking Regime here, and today coming at you guys with another Too Old Franchise episode. Following a nice road victory against the Atlanta Falcons, we're coming back home to Lambeau Field, hoping to get our first home win of the season after that horrific first week performance where we really should have taken the victory, but, you know, that's just how it is. Sometimes you start off slow, we're going to try to get back on track, and we did that last week against Atlanta, a really nice victory Offense played well, defense played well. I thought it was a pretty dominant performance on all in all facets of the game, to be honest with you. So that was really pleasing to me. Now we're going to look to continue our success against the Cincinnati Bengals again at home. We got some of our old playmakers showing off on the screen right there. Frank Gore, Vincent Jackson, some goals. And Larry Fitzgerald as well, a guy I really should get involved a little bit more. But, you know, just haven't had the opportune moment to really get him the ball a lot. Josh McCown had a good week last week. Let's hope if he can. Let's hope that he can continue that this week against Cincinnati. Really interested to see how the Bengals roster is in comparison with the other rosters I've faced so far. They've always had some good players, so I'm curious where their strengths and weaknesses are. So we're starting things off kicking first. They got Danny Amendola returning the kick. Nothing too concerning there. Check out the roster. They got Carson Wentz, Marshawn Lynch and Jay Ajay, a double-dreaded monster right there, quite literally. And I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'm not going to lie. They seem like they have a lot of white receivers. George, uh, Chris Hogan, Amendola, maybe they just took the Patriots players on the offensive side of the football and moved them to Cincinnati because they also had their left tackle for whatever reason. But not too concerned about the passing game. Of course, Carson Wentz can make anything happen, apparently, uh, both in real life and in the video game universe. But... Jordan Reed, 97 overall tight end, was a very concerning sight to me. Uh, I did not expect that in any way, shape, or form. That was very odd. Did not see that coming at all. But Marshawn Lynch and Jay Ajay are the number one concerns to me. I want to stop that. So Cliff Averill, I think Miles Garrett, uh, Geno Atkins, Ninkovich, a very solid defensive line. Uh, but defensively in the secondary, that's a pretty weak unit in my eyes. So I think we can exploit that. If we are smart in how we pass the football, you know how it is playing these computer players. This is all pro, but still, these guys make some crazy plays, so i got to be careful when I'm passing the football. But first off, defensively, a lot of it is just hope. We just kind of hope that they don't make these crazy reads. Right here, I thought that was one of those quite crazy reads on third and six. Fortunately, Danny Amendola does not keep both feet in bounds. We actually force a three and out on the first possession of the game, which is... Shocking to me, really surprising. I did not think that would ever happen in a million years, but it did, especially with the defense around 80, 81 overall, some aging guys, the pass rush not really being existent. That was surprising, but here we go on the offensive side of the football. We get it to John Denny, our number one playmaker of 50 overall, and that was shocking to me that he actually got that open, that separation. That just kind of proves to you what type of game we're playing and the fact that John Denny is also a long snapper. So we get Frank Gore on the edge to a halfback toss. Going to pistol with a little bit of his own play. Don't get much of anything right there. We go to shallow cross. I really like that cushion they're giving me with Vincent Jackson. We're going to take that 10 times out of 10 and get a first down all 10 of those times. Right here, four verticals. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I noticed the mismatch in the cornerback play. We're going to throw it to Vincent Jackson 6-5. That's an easy one for me. I don't know why people in Madden wanted to just throw everything wide open. If you have the mismatch and a better player on their cornerback, you can afford to throw it their way once in a while, especially if you have a guy who's 6'5", and, and really that contest looked really good to me, to be honest, but it doesn't matter. Vincent Jackson's still going to get there with, I believe, the 28-yard touchdown snag, and we're back on defense. So he's running some play action right now with Carson Wentz. Going to throw it over the middle to Chris Hogan for a really nice 23-yard gain. Ah, he's finding these guys wide open, and this is what I don't want to see right here. This is absolutely what I do not want to see. I don't want to see Marshawn Lynch running the football. Okay, Carson Wentz. He can pass the ball down the field and make some plays happen. I'm okay with that to an extent. Running the football, that's unacceptable. Of course, Carson Wentz rolls to his right, throws across his body on the run. Uh, that was incredible. I uh, don't even know how to explain that. But right there, I don't really know how to explain that either other than the fact that we don't invest a lot of skill in our old defensive guys at the end of the day when they're that old defense defense is kind of hard to play if you have everybody very old i feel like it's harder than it is on offense but that's just my opinion as uh we get scored on the touchdown he destroys some of our defenders but it's all good we're gonna get the ball back to john denny 
and go for another first down. 5 of 5 for 91 yards and a TD on the day thus far for Josh McCown. But let's stick to our playmakers. Instead of John Denny, let's go to a guy like Larry Fitzgerald that we know can consistently be trusted. So we hit Darren Sproles underneath, another excellent player. 7 of 7 right now for McCown. Not throwing a lot of high-risk throws, but everything is working for us. We're moving the ball shortly, but surely down the field. Vincent Jackson right there has been a great player for us. We go to the Tukuafu package as it works so well in Atlanta. And Keanu Neal was having none of that. Maybe he took it from Atlanta. They sent him a message that, you know, hey, you're leaving Atlanta, but just don't let them embarrass you like they did to us. Although, Atlanta, they tried to come back against us a little bit. Tukuafu is trending down at the moment. I'm really considering release with him or possibly never playing him again in my life because that was extremely disappointing on my behalf. Frank Gore has carried the ball probably three times as many uh, times as, as Tukuafu has, and he's never fumbled. So I'm considering just playing Frank Gore every time. He doesn't ever seem to fumble, but uh, Tukulafu is really frustrating. And Vince Wilfork, of all people, gets in on the pass rush. Okay, yeah, we have James Harrison, Lorenzo Alexander, Julius Peppers, and Wilfork is one of the guys getting the first couple, getting a, a first sack of the day. A little bit shocking there, but we hold into a long field goal. 19 or 49-yard field goal attempt is short. We have plenty of time to work with. So McCown sending some guys deep. This is what's excellent on McCown. Very good runner. Still at age 38. Can run the football on the ground. And you see the clock winding down. You're like, how the heck did it drop from 39 to 4? Somehow I forgot to turn off Excel clock or something. And it just messed everything up. So I'm going to try to get a little bit more balance on offense. This is a new half. A fresh start for us. We get the ball. Tied ball game. Going to try and run the football a little bit. Establish a little bit of running game so we don't have to rely so much on McCown making plays for us in the passing game, even though they don't have a great secondary. We go back to Tukuafu. He continues to disappoint. So 7 all. We're going to punt the ball. Psych, we're not. John Kuhn with the fake punt sweep for the first down. Excellent play on our behalf, but extraordinarily risky call on my part. Really, it was unnecessary. It was kind of a poor decision, to be honest with you. It was the heat of the moment type play. Uh, at our own like 50 yard line could have put us in a horrible situation ultimately it was the right move because we end up punting anyway so it doesn't matter uh, seven all we're on defense and fortunately Wentz gets flushed outside the pocket and doesn't make a remarkable throw well he does for us as Mike Adams gets an interception and drop and gets back to our own uh, actually our opponents 36 yard line so whenever there's a turnover like in real life I like to take shots deep so we're gonna take a shot to one of the best players at the wide receiver position in NFL history, Larry Fitzgerald. Don't get anything out of that. Unfortunately, we don't even move the ball that much, but Vinatieri comes in so clutch with a nice field goal. Same length, actually, as the one they missed, 49-yarder. We take the lead 10-7, heading on into the fourth quarter. So we're back on defense. Again, it's very concerning. Fortunately, they actually get a flag, so we have some better field position to work with defensively. Until, of course, they pass a, what, 19-yard gain to Danny Amendola. And now they're looking to pass the ball a lot. Look at that pass. Oh, my God, that was remarkable. That was incredible accuracy on Carson Wentz throwing a, you know, I think that was across his body as well. And uh, actually a safety right there closed, which was surprising. And in Madden 18, you rarely see safeties close on posts. And that time we actually had a great closed by our safety. I don't know who that was. It was Mike Adams, I believe. He's been playing very well for us, and he's uh, unfortunately still moving the football down our throats. A little bit less than three minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Marshawn Lynch is rumbling and bumbling down the line. This is a massive play right here, and we have Carlos Dansbury using him, and in my opinion, that right there was the biggest defensive play of the game for us. We held him to three. We didn't allow him to get a lead where we would have to score a touchdown to win the game and that was vital to me so we're gonna try to get down the field and get a field goal with Adam Vinatieri if if it's the last thing we do because offensively there are times where we look really ugly and we're gonna try for that time to not be right now when we need it most so we go to the spread formation right here Frank Gore running up the middle and he comes in really clutch right there Bumbling for a little bit more than four yards, right, four or five yards right there. Go to a stack formation with a uh, sail play, and McCown is using the wheels late in the game. Coming up clutch, can he hopefully drive us 
to a game-winning drive. And Frank Gore is also, we are putting our whole and utter, tr utter trust in Frank Gore right now. And he is coming in so clutch. I mean, that was the biggest chunk of running yardage I think I've gotten all year. It's so hard against these computer players for me. I don't know if it's because it's Frank Gore or the offensive line or what it is, but Gore is just playing his mind like crazy right now. I mean, 57 yards, <clears throat> that's like 150 in this universe to me. So we actually have a chance to win the game with one of the best kickers all time, Adam Vinatieri. He's not going to miss. So we actually win this game at home to go 2-1 and one in week number three of the regular season. Excellent victory for us. I think the morale is high it's increasing we won two in a row to start off the year and this wasn't in dominating fashion but i think for most of the game it was pretty comfortable we didn't throw any interceptions tuku afu screwed us over really hard and, and that was something that makes me um you know highly consider getting rid of him to be honest with you and fenny came in or denny came in clutch early on uh vincent jackson was been really the offensive player of the year for us so far three games in the pass rush was, you know, <laughs> just boosted by Vince Wilfork's presence somehow, some way. We don't know. That's just how it was. Defensively, for them, they didn't really make too many plays aside from that one Keanu Neal for his fumble. And against Carson Wentz, he played well, but we made things happen when we needed to. So, running the football, I really like the balance that we had this game. Things turned out pretty well. I hate that turnover on that screen, but the third down conversion percentage, not too bad. 50% could be better. But overall, I was pretty happy with the performance. And we take one last look at the defensive play of the game. This was excellent play by both Durant and Dansby. And to plug that gap, that guard was, you know, I don't even know what the heck that Bengals guard was doing. Ajay has got to be so pissed. But that actually will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Madden NFL 18 content. These franchise videos as well as player creation tutorials. And I actually did launch a website if you guys are curious about suggesting new content to me, or learning the schedule of the channel. All that information is on that website, and it will be in the description. But once again, that will be the conclusion of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and yep, thanks for watching.